All right, what's up everyone? So welcome back. Here is another update on the electric enduro conversion build. So at this point, I'm working on building mounting brackets for all of the hardware. So the battery, the shunt, the fuse, the power conversion box that I have the video about as well, and just all of the wiring and kind of like the hardware that needs to be attached to the frame in you know, a way that's secure and compact. So first and foremost, we have the battery pack. So what I did here was attach some, basically I built some brackets out of this sort of steel. This is uh, kind of these straps that they have at my metal supply place. I think they use them to secure large shipments of metal and they're all in the scrap bin. And uh, you can just grab as many of these as you want and they're really useful. You can make a ton of useful things out of this for mounting brackets. So, so I used that to build these sort of reinforcement brackets to attach to the top and the bottom of the battery pack. And this provides uh, a little bit extra security for the, you know, because this is a 3D printed case, it's ultimately plastic, PETG. So I wanted a little bit more reinforcement for it, but it also provides a way to attach mounting brackets to the battery pack. So I have one here, then I have one here, and I have one on the bottom as well, right there. So this will provide places where this battery pack can be secured to the frame. So down here, we have the bracket where the battery pack will sit, and this is attached to the mounting points where the engine used to mount. And additionally here, there's a little screw that attaches to the battery pack to keep it from sliding back and forth. Then there's another bracket up there. And then this area, that's where this will go. This will hold the top of the battery and then the shunt will go on this upper portion. Here I have a countersink that I messed up, but uh, I don't wanna fix it, so. I'm just gonna reinforce that with a spacer. But then on the other side, there are bolts. Uh, there are nuts that are mounted to attach the shunt holder. I'll show you that in a bit. And then down here is a spot for the fuse. So this piece attaches like this. So it just kind of slides in here and then basically, flips over the top. So this is another point where the engine was previously attached and then I have some bolts that go through there. And this top portion attaches to this little bracket that I created, which also has a nut in there. So that way it can be secured from the top. And then the shunt attaches here, the battery slides into this area and then a junction for the ground will go here and then the fuse will go in this area right there. The battery pack slides into the brackets like this. It's a pretty snug fit, but it's also very easy to just slide it in place and it just snaps like that. So there's the battery pack inside the frame and the way those little mounting brackets work is over here, you have a screw, you just have a nut that screws on there. And this is meant to basically just keep the battery pack from sliding back out. And then there's another bracket back here where I would put a screw in here. There's a nut back there so I can secure this. Then up here you have this bracket. And this is really meant for, to keep the upper piece on the battery pack from kind of like opening back up. So now that the battery pack is in place, there's an additional screw that goes in here. And this secures this upper plate for mounting the shunt. So there's that nut at the bottom. And then another one up here. And both of those are really meant to keep the battery pack from sliding back out this way. So they're not really meant to be holding any significant load, just really securing the battery pack 
sliding along those rails. Here is the main fuse in place. It just attaches to that bracket using countersink screws on this side. Next we have this piece. This is sort of a junction for all of my grounds that are gonna attach here. And this attaches to this bracket right there. And there it is in place. So what I did was model the shunt in Fusion 360 and then create the shunt holder. So this is gonna, this holds the shunt pretty much perfectly. It fits right in here. Just snaps in just like that. I'm actually gonna make these a little bit lower so that it's exactly flush to the shunt. This is still a little bit of a work in progress. I also have these notches here because uh, I'm gonna print the cover and have it snap in. But it has mounts to the frame here and then the shunt and lugs that go to the battery are gonna attach here using bolts that run through here. So the bolts will be sort of sunken into, the, into this section here so they'll never come in contact with the frame. Meanwhile, the mounts for the shunt itself will attach to these points here, which have bolts welded to the other side. So this basically just easily screws in just like that. Here's the shunt attached to the holder. And as I said, the main bolts that attach, that would attach the terminals there, you know, they're kind of sunken into the holder like that. So, and I'm also thinking about maybe 3D printing some covers that I can just sort of little buttons that I could press in here. So that would be completely covered. And there is the shunt screwed in place. It's very secure and electrically isolated. And those are pretty much all the components. So you have that junction box, there's the fuse, there's the shunt and the battery, the motor, the controller. Then the final piece that I almost forgot is the contactor. So that attaches to that bracket up there. So this is just welded over here and it attaches to these two screws, basically in this orientation. And there is the contactor in place. Here's the power conversion box in place. And now we have all the components on the bike. You've got the battery, the shunt, the ground junction box, the contactor, and the fuse. And of course the motor and controller. I added one final piece to the battery pack reinforcement here which is this latch buckle. Because what happens is because of the way this battery pack is supported, basically on this corner and then up here and up here, this bottom portion without the latch is able to, you know, kind of slightly come down. I mean, it's possible for it to um, recede away from the battery pack. So I wanted to make sure that the bottom of the battery pack is well supported uh, across the area of the bottom. So I just added this little latch buckle that attaches and holds this flush to the bottom of the battery pack and also prevents it from moving away. So that weight of the battery pack is distributed across the, that entire bottom bracket. So now everything is ready to be connected and finally to get the wiring all done. 